Feliz Sabado a todos. Welcome to Sabbath to Sunday Part 2. In this video, I will be addressing common misconceptions about the Sabbath, like Revelation 1.10, breaking of the bread, and Sabbath days. Revelation 1.10 I was in the Spirit of the Lord on the Lord's Day, and heard behind me a great voice, as of a trumpet. Christians like to say, this was Sunday. Sunday? At, uh, at that point in time, Sunday was the day to worship the sun. It was the pagan day of worship. We find sources such as the Didache and other early Christian writings addressing Sunday as the Lord's Day. Technically speaking, the day of the Lord, Lord's Day, is mentioned several times throughout the Bible. 2 Peter 3.10 But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are in there shall be burnt up. 1 Thessalonians 5.2 For you for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. These verses show us that the day of the Lord is not a day like Sunday or the Sabbath, but something completely different. The only reason why people get the Lord's Day mixed up with the Sabbath is because the early church called the Sunday the Lord's Day, trying to justify themselves biblically speaking. So let's have a look at what the day of the Lord is. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13-17 and 1 Thessalonians 5, 1-2. We have to remember the Bible didn't always have chapters and verses, but they were divided up when the King James was creating the King James Bible. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 But I would not have you to be ignorant, brother, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need but that I write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord is a cometh as a thief in the night. This sounds like to me that this is talking about the second coming. I am sure everyone can't wait for the Lord's Day. It will be such a glorious day. Now, the breaking of the bread. The first time it is mentioned in the New Testament is Matthew 6.11. Give us our daily bread. It doesn't talk about the breaking of bread, but it talks about our daily bread. So here is a question. Did the apostles break bread once a week on Sunday? Or did they break bread every day. Jesus broke bread. He fed the 5,000 and on the last supper Jesus broke bread. Matthew 26, 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Most people believed that the last supper was held on the Thursday. Acts 20 verse 7. And upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Acts 2.42 And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. Breaking bread does not mean church on Sunday. It means they were eating. Acts 2.46 And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart they daily did this the breaking of bread was done on Sunday Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday Thursday, Friday and the Sabbath the next argument is found in a couple of places Colossians 2.14 blotting out the handwriting of audiences that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. 
and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoot of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect of a holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath day, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. This verse is all fine until we read the Sabbath day. Why has Paul placed the Sabbath in the same sentence? Now, people who say Paul changed Sabbath to Sunday say, here we are. Here is a verse saying that the Sabbath is done away with. Okay, can you please explain to me how the Sabbath is a shadow of Jesus? Secondly, how could the Sabbath day be blotted out when we know full well that the commandments are still just as meaningful when they were written up till present? Sabbath days, holy days, etc. are celebrations like the Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, etc. Because they were all Sabbath days. They were all also a shadow of what was to come. What did the Passover represent? The spiritual theme of Passover is one of salvation by the atoning blood of a perfect spotless sacrifice, sacrificed lamb, also known as Jesus. The Gentile Christians didn't understand why they had to go to these Sabbath days, and the Jews were pushing them to keep these Sabbath days, saying they are very important. Paul says, let no one judge you about what Sabbath days you do keep. But these were a shadow of what was to come. In verse 14, it states, blotting out. Can the Ten Commandments be blotted out? Was Paul talking about the Ten Commandments? I think not. My last point is that later on, Paul proved how Jewish he was to the Jews by performing a Jewish cer ceremony. Are zealous for the law. They have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children. Take these men, join in their purification rites, and pay their expenses so that they can have their heads shaved. Then everybody will know there is no truth in these reports about you but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law. As for the Gentile believers, we have written to them our decision that they should abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. The next day, Paul took the men and purified himself along with them. Then he went to the temple to give notice of the date when the days of purification would end and the offering would be made for each of them. Now, if he wasn't keeping the Sabbath, they wouldn't think of him as a Jew. They nearly killed Jesus because he broke the Sabbath. So Paul did not teach contrary to the law of God, but to the laws of man, just like Jesus did. This concludes Sabbath to Sunday part two. If you have any questions, leave me a comment, send me a message or whatever. Just remember, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. God bless. You answered my prayer. You were always there. Caring for me in every way. When I call on you. Give to you